many respects, I'm now back with an old friend. This is the new old SIC RS. Um, so look, this is the SIC RS. Nothing has changed, apart from the colour and the construction. Other than that, it's the good old SIC RS. Um, the video could pretty much be done there and then, but there is more to this board in terms of just why it still warrants its place in the SIC lineup. SIC is a brand really built on their legacy of producing some of the world's best downwind boards specifically. Uh, this model here particularly, this is the second iteration, you could argue it's the third. It's the second version of the SIC RS that was a little bit more refined, probably released around two, three years ago. Um, the board itself, very, very quick, very popular, uh, very well made, and a design that really kind of did it all. It was as good an all water board as you could get those couple of seasons ago and that you can still get today. It really does stand up and hold its own position in what is a very strong and growing slightly SIC board range lineup. Why the board is different to previous models it's not just the aesthetic and it looks stunning. I really, really like this graphic. It also crosses over with the rest of the range, which is nice to see because at points is, there's been no consistency, if you like, in SIC's designs across the range. There now is, so that's a nice feature that's good to see. But it's really the construction. Now the construction of this board is what they refer to as their dragonfly construction. The other construction that you have from SIC, so like the new RST, of which we'll have a video shortly, is their Superfly construction. And Superfly actually is what this board has only been available before. Now Superfly is a carbon sandwich construction. Very light, very rigid, and top-notch stuff. The problem with that is there is a price to pay and it carries a premium. So in the UK, in sterling, including local taxes, you're at 3,500 pounds-ish is where you're at. And that's a lot of money. Now, there are other brands, Starboard for instance, that produce their boards in two types of constructions to really achieve two different price points. And SIC have never ever done that within the same model. They had the opportunity to do that with the RS, but they've chosen to drop the Superfly construction in favor of their Dragonfly construction. Now, boards known to us like the SIC Okeanos, which is probably one of my favorite touring boards of all time, has long been produced in the Dragonfly construction, and I was concerned because as hard wearing and as durable that construction is for what is a composite board, because you do have to care for these things and treat them a little bit with kid gloves, the Dragonfly construction is heavy. Now what they've done in this RS, and my reservations have actually been proven incorrect, is they've made it much lighter. So even as a Dragonfly construction board, when compared to an Okeanos, this board, the RS configuration, is a lighter layup of board construction than compared to the Dragonfly construction found in the Okeanos. So much so, in fact, that you're probably only around 700 to 750 grams more in the, Superfly, uh, in the Dragonfly construction of this RS board over and above the Superfly construction that we've had before. Given that there's roughly a thousand pound difference for that 750 grams, I would say bang for buck, this board's excellent value for money. Uh, and I would much rather take that saving and go and buy a couple of salads <laughs> uh, and a better paddle than I would put the extra money into a board of a much lighter construction. For most paddlers, if you are the elite of the elite and you want the lightest, stiffest construction, then the Superfly version of this board in previous iterations is definitely the way to go. If you're looking for a board that is really, really capable at a price point that is 
within the reach of most people if you're looking at a 14 foot race board because this is the price point you're there or thereabouts then yeah the rs should firmly be on your list but look let me run you through the from the nose down to the tail just to remind you out there if you haven't watched our previous rs videos as to why this board is still a standout all water board the nose on this board really refined pulled in very little drag uh, the board itself and how it interacts with the water surface it runs a very slight uh, rocker downward in the nose section which really helps with tracking and ensures that the overall water line length of this board is really maximized the rocker line of this board as well is relatively flat and for that it really does perform very very well on flat water now as things start to chop up, what's really nice with this board is it carries actually very little volume relatively compared to other all water boards on the market. And particularly the new RST, very little volume, which makes it very, very manageable. The sides on the board are really nicely rounded. They're not this big slab sided kind of fashion, if you like, that we saw a lot of board brands go down. This board has always been quite easy to manage and control in a cross sea. Um, as a result of that rounded rail, Coming back, there's a slight raise in the nose area. That just helps displace any water as it's coming over the nose and seeing it run off down the rails on either side. And you come back to the deck area. Now, I had to remind myself because I actually thought the deck on this was slightly deeper than the previous iterations of RS. And it's not, it's actually the same. We've taken a ruler to a, a good friend of ours his RS uh, Superfly and we found it to be exactly the same as the previous model. Not having paddled one of these for a little while now it was nice to get back on it and actually feel it underfoot and feel that while there's been this kind of big change in direction to go to a lot of dugouts and we see kind of brands coming back now with flat decks so like Starboard would say with their Gen R that this board is it's a nice hybrid almost of a flat deck and a dugout in that you still end up with the security here of a dugout, but you don't end up kind of feeling, I guess it doesn't have that claustrophobic feel that dugouts can sometimes have. As a result, because it isn't a true, true dugout, the footwork as you work your way back down towards this tail are really, really easy because it's a very, very gentle slight slope because it's not a deep standing area. As you work your way back down the tail though, it's clean, you're totally unimpeded. And the nice thing on the RS, well, it's always been the tail on this board. It's very, very wide. In fact, on this model, I think it's around almost 16 and a half, 17 inches in width, which means that when you're down there, it's really, really stable because it is so square as well. Now that square tail does give and yield a really good release on the board. So it does actually maintain its speed and its glide very, very easily. And it gives off this lovely clean wake off the back of the board. Another feature on deck that I do like and often we find people do request us try and achieve in other board brands uh, with the additional handle mounting points is this small uh, elasticated bungee area. It might not look like much, but in all kind of stowing a water bottle or even just some light shoes if you're going to and from on your portage, it's a nice little feature and a really nice touch. Up here also you have another leash mounting point in addition to the one on the tail and that actually is a nice little touch because if you do want that leash set slightly forward of you, then you've got the option on this board. A tried and tested trademark almost that you see from SIC is the carry handle in the centre. The sense of control that you have over a 14 foot board, particularly on windy days, is unreal because you have total control of the board. There aren't these flexible handles like we've got on the outboard here and we also see on other brands. It's just a really nice touch. The only slight downside of it though, with it being as deep as it is, in order to get your hand fitted inside, it can fill and it will fill and collect water. Uh, no great shakes, not a tremendous amount. It will splash and leak out over time, uh, particularly if you walk the board from rail to rail. And then the actual deck standing area drains really quickly through these two drainage holes on either side. So onto the underside of the board. Carefully roll her over. 
you'll see just how flat and also uncluttered the underside of this board is. And that clean overall finish on this board just makes it very predictable to ride. It gives really intuitive feedback and it makes it thoroughly usable. And I would say that's one of the standout things when paddling the RS is really just how usable it is. It kind of like, if you imagine all of the performance of the board kind of wrapped up into one, well, you can access most of it without having to learn too much of the board. It's, it really is an open book in that respect. And you can jump on it and, you know, 90% of the performance that this board will offer or more is instantly accessible to you. As you work your way back down though from this flat midsection, it transitions into this slight single wide channel, which has been crafted into the board and runs all the way to the tail past the US fin box. One thing I've always liked with SIC boards as well is they don't skimp on the fin. You end up with their lovely carbon SIC weedless fin on this board, and it's a very, very light fin. So much so that you probably wouldn't look to go and fit anything aftermarket. So then really, who is the SIC RS4? Well, I would say it's anyone really that's wanting a very quick, proven, and you've got to remember, you know, this design is three years old, and that's not a bad thing, proven design in a construction that is really now available in a price point, which we haven't seen before from SIC. One slight criticism, I would rather see the board still available in Superfly as well, so at least you, the paddler out there, can make the decision as to whether you want the Superfly or the Dragonfly construction, rather than kind of having just one construction forced upon you as such. If you were forced to have one of these boards though, you wouldn't be disappointed. Thanks for watching our video. If you've got any questions about what you've seen, why not give us a call in the shop or head over to thesupco.com. To stay up to date though with all of our videos, well, make sure you subscribe up here and hit the notification bell. But to see our next video, well, take a look up here.